giving way to sunshine and temperatures going up near 80 degrees. Got a nice warm week on the way. Um, and Robert Channing is in studio. Good morning, Robert. Good morning. Good morning again. Uh, the House Waves, you have a, an interview with House Waves? Yeah, Mike? it's. Um, uh, we're going to be speaking with, how do you say your name, Andrew? Uh, Carrie Duber. I wouldn't be able to pronounce any of their names. <laughs> I Except, think it, isn't I think there a Hilton? Duber. There's a Hilton on one of them. Mm. Like it's a Paris, Paris Hilton's aunt or something it is on, on one what, of them. Depends on what you're talking about. New York City, there's Texas, right, there's California, so many whatever different they ones. Got. They would have no idea what they were dealing with if they were Housewives of Utica. <laughs> housewives oh of gosh. Utica, Rome. You would need a whole channel. Yeah. And we'd be the Utica Housewives and the Rome Housewives would kind of meet in one place and they'd clash. We need that big police van after, yeah, right? Yeah, we would. We would. It would be wild. What is that? The and then, you, and, then, and then you had the Housewives of the Valley. And then by the time you know it, um, this would be like a whole, I mean, this would be ratings. Okay. <laughs> You, uh, Robert Channing, were now. What is the the, the Beheim's big event at the Turning Stone? It's, it's called, called uh, the basketball. The basketball. It was a couple weeks ago, yeah. and uh, and you were there. Yes, they had uh, Dan Patrick there as the MC, uh, which was a which was a. I think pa Dan Patrick said, "I'll come up and MC if you make the final four or exactly. something like that." Exactly. And Beheim called him on it because oh, who would yeah. have thought that this year's team would have would have made it to the final <laughs> that four? That was the best. Yeah, yeah, we had a great turnout, raised uh, a lot of money. I uh, I was asked to be the the guest entertainment, and also they auctioned off all the paintings at the end. So I did the uh, nice. The first one I did was uh, Jim Beheim, and that auctioned off for quite a bit of money, thousands and thousands of dollars. And mm -hmm. then uh, the Pearl Washington, and then I actually that was the ending. Uh, then I did all the the S Super Seven, we call them the seven uh, people that the starters of the Syracuse yeah, yeah. basketball. So I did all those uh, guys at once, and they came up and signed it, and then that auctioned off for I think sixteen thousand. Wow! And then the pearl, uh, uh, Jim Beheim wouldn't let anybody buy it. He bought it for ten grand, and that's what I brought in here today. They're going to actually, uh, if you want to reveal the news, you want me to tell them what's going yeah, on today. Yeah, uh, so this is the actual painting that's this, going to yep, be. This is the painting that's going to be displayed. Uh, Jim Beheim bought it at, at his own basketball because uh, you know we did a we did a I created a video, and while I painted it, the video of uh, Pearl is like basically life was playing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, very touched, and he said, "I'm buying this, and I'm putting it up at the Carmelo Anthony Center." So we're going out there today at 2 o'clock, and they're going to be hanging it at the Carmelo Anthony Center in Syracuse, New York, the basketball center. And Manaski is uh, putting this up right now for the uh, the camera. Uh, we're every day on uh, on uh, WFXV, Fox 33, from 6 till 9 o'clock, a simulcast. And there's the picture. Wow. Move it in there just that a little is... bit, number 31. I, Robert, I think that's the biggest one I've ever seen that you that you brought in here. Oh, yeah. I mean, I couldn't fit the other yeah, one in here. It was like 20 by 20. But uh, I mean, you're dealing with... You know, large people, you know, right, basketball sure. players. But he did. I mean, Trump. Just... Trump's had, had a very big head. <laughs> it was huge. Uh, large <laughs> it was head. Huge. huge. It was huge. I don't know if you saw that, but I was on uh, Fox and Friends last yeah. uh, this past Tuesday. Mm -hmm. They had me on in the morning from uh, six to nine. And yeah, actually, you're doing did, everybody right. Yeah, I did all the. That was cool. They really wanted me on for the painting of the tr of Trump. So yeah. um, I did it on the YouTube video, and uh, they saw it, and they wanted me to come in and, and do it again, and then talk about it. So when I went in to do it, the first time I did Trump, I just painted his, you know, his, his, yeah, his yeah. face and everything. So I went in the next time and I put Trump or President Trump. So we get a little controversy, you know. So it's going all over viral right now. But um, and then so I painted the, the three hosts. Then I painted the Statue of Liberty. And at the end, I did some mind reading. Oh, that's cool. And uh, it was real fun. I mean, you yeah. spent the whole morning there. So, yeah, uh, Jeff, you can. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, unless you want to stand there. You're blocking Bill's view yeah. there. Come on. They can't see me. <laughs> Come on, what's going on here? Uh, all right, sit tight. We'll uh, we'll talk more about this. Uh, but a big day coming up in Syracuse for Robert Channing. Uh, Alan Sachs, Professor Alan Sachs with the University of Texas. And uh, a new poll out. First of all, Alan, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I saw that on uh, on Fox. The gentleman that was talking about, is that where he throws sort of gold glitter? That is. That it was is. really interesting. Yeah, That's well, awesome. he's, he's right. He, hey, it thank was you. Great. It was really interesting. I want him to throw some gold glitter over me. Well, listen. <laughs> you, <laughs> That's after a few drinks, okay? <laughs> I want him to make me look, look prettier. All right, well, listen. Uh, he, we'll, we'll hook you up with his information. You could bring him down to the University of Texas. It would, it would be, be great. It would be awesome. So, all right. So, first of all, NBC News poll comes out yesterday. And has Bernie Sanders beating uh, Donald Trump handily in a head-to-head, -head, yet Hillary Clinton with a three-point lead now after she had a ten-point lead just a month ago. It is a very, very close election. And what the headlines are saying is that uh, the voters like Trump on the economy, but they like Clinton on foreign policy and nuclear weapons. 
I would argue that foreign policy and national security should be number one in today's election. Yeah. Without national security and a strong foreign policy, there is no economy. And frankly, I think Donald Trump is going to go up in the polls in regard to um, uh, the economy. And even the, but a lot of people are, are very mistrustful because they believe that he's a little bit too trigger happy. Uh, I doubt that very much, but that's, but that's the, uh, the appraisal by the mainline media. He's too trigger happy, so the yeah. public doesn't like his, uh, his finger on the nuclear trigger. I'm not sure, it's just, in fairness, I'm not sure it's just the mainstream media that says he's a little trigger happy. I think a lot of people believe it, that. It might kind of be the things that have come out of his mouth. Um, that has to, and yet he's backing off a lot of those things now. He's becoming very different. You know, when a lot of people say that uh, he's flip-flopped all over the place, and he has. He's been contradictory in places. But when you look back at history, and, and those are very fine. I know the former Secretary of Defense, uh, Robert Gates, is talking about how he's a little bit inconsistent, and they look for nuances in his inconsistency and in things on trade policy and even on foreign policy. But when you look back at history, there weren't just little refinements where people... Uh, where presidential candidates and presidents made uh, uh, inconsistent statements. Uh, both Woodrow Wilson, a Democratic president, and Franklin Roosevelt, a Democratic president, said before they were elected, and it was a mainline thing, they would not go to war. They would not send American boys into a war. And what did we get later on? A war. Yeah. Now, by the way, they were justified in going to war, especially President Franklin Roosevelt. Well, kind of hard to, to uh, ignore Very Pearl Harbor. Very difficult to, yeah. to, to say no to that. Yeah. But uh, still, it shows that the times may change. And what you elect a president for is someone who has the ability, uh, the, the, the general framework, uh, to handle things. Professor, I, I, I do have to say, I, I normally very much agree with you. I and mean, we love having you come on. But I vehemently disagree with you on this. There, there's it's one thing to say okay George Bush got hammered because he said no new taxes that's right you have every president comes out and makes promises that they do not keep on big but, ones, on big on right big on ones. big things even like we're not going to go to war that's but who right. who could who would say that because right. you know but these are we're going to we're going to outlaw an entire community based on their religion we're going to build a wall and make the Mexicans pay for it these are some of the statements that Trump has said are so un-American, they are not comparable to things that, that FDR or anybody else has ever no, done, in my opinion. When you go back to Franklin Delano Roosevelt, he did do that. Uh, d during World War II, immigration was oh, yeah. almost closed down. That's a good point. And, 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 and also, if you were a legal alien, a legal alien in the United States, and you came from any of the countries that we were at war with, I know we have not had a formal declaration of war with, as we did in World War II, there were very big restrictions on where you could even travel, even if you yeah. were a legal alien in, in, the, in the United States. So when President Obama says that's not who we are, you know. Well, uh, sure. And look what happened with the uh, with the Japanese, the internment. Well, that's exactly yeah. who we are. Yeah. Uh, however, though, it is kind of a, a first to be able to say we're going to do it based it on your religion. It is. I it's mean, you're, you're right. It, it was you know? on country of origin. Not right. necessarily religion. You're right. You're you're absolutely correct about that. And I, but, I think I'd be I would be okay if Trump, but if Trump wouldn't have gotten the same, if Trump said from countries that are considered terrorist countries, we will allow right. that. But he would not have gotten the publicity had he said it that way. He you're said right. Syria, though. His, his he was specific to Syria. Uh, he based on their religion, though it was not Syrians; it was right. Muslims. Well, <laughs> that you cannot. You you. Ju I, I just. But he wouldn't have gotten the play on it had he not had he not said it that way. Right. You he know. is the, the the main reason I think a lot of people like him. He is blasting political correctness. Yeah. And a friend of mine put it very well when I replied the same way you're doing. I said, "But look at his comments. Look at his yeah. look at his things." And she's re and she replied to me. I think, uh, but he has to do that because he's blasting political correctness. If he did it with nuances and refinements, it wouldn't work so well. Yeah. Well, I, that part I agree with. As long as we're talking about. How he gets his publicity, right. I, I agree with that. You're absolutely right, and uh, and there is no arguing with somebody who supports Trump. You're you're right there too. That's you, right. <laughs> yeah. He, this is he has he, his followers. He has them, and they don't care what he right. said. They just know he's going to turn things upside down. So. That's right, and that's what the people want. Yeah. And even on the Democratic side, uh, Bernie is doing a pretty good job of doing the same thing. It's crazy to the point where. Yeah, I got to tell you, uh, somebody over the weekend said, do you think that Bernie Sanders is Hillary Clinton's Ross Perot? What do you That's think about right. that? 
I, I don't think he's going to be an independent candidate, but he sure is driving her nuts. Oh, there's no doubt about it. All right, Professor, as Thank always. Thank you so much, sir. We love having you on. Thanks so Thank much. Thank you very much. Christine with an update right now. 720, good. I know. <laughs>